is a Photoshop technique so powerful that it can improve the quality of potentially every edit you make. But Photoshop doesn't make it easy or fast to use. So in this video, I'm going to show you the time-saving trick to start using it with ease so you can level up your editing faster than you might have thought possible. First, it's important to understand the problem that this technique fixes and why not using it can actually cause your edits to look clunky and low quality. When you make an adjustment like brightening your photo with a curves adjustment, for example, it usually looks best in some parts of your image, but not others. Like if you want to make some dark rocks lighter, it doesn't make sense to make the whole image lighter. So what you'd normally do is use a layer mask to hide the adjustment, pressing Command or Control I on the keyboard to invert the layer mask first. And then you'd use a white brush to reveal the effect in the areas you want it to be seen. But the problem with using a brush directly into a layer mask is that while it's easy, it's not accurate. The brush will always either go over the edges of what you want to affect and into parts you don't, or it won't go close enough to the edges. And you might think that using a smaller and smaller brush to get right up to those edges would be the answer, but that takes forever and it's still pretty much impossible to do perfectly accurately. And it's going to leave nasty halos behind as well. So this is where a technique called luminosity masking comes in which in this example allows you to brush only into the parts of the image that are already dark, meaning your brush can go over the edges, but it won't. Just think of it like spray painting through a stencil where the stencil is based on what's light and what's dark in your photo. Now the only problem with luminosity masking is that it's pretty complex and it can take a long time to learn. But to solve that problem, I made a free plugin for Photoshop that you can download from the link in the description or pinned comment which takes away all the complication and makes the whole process as easy as a few clicks. So let me show you how. At the top of the plugin, you have this luminosity selections bar, which has some buttons labeled minus five to five. And when you click on one on the minus end, the plugin loads a selection of the shadows in your image. And when you click on a positive number, the plugin loads a selection of the highlights. Then the larger the number, the deeper into that tonal range, the selection or stencil is gonna be made. So for example, minus one essentially selects the dark half of the image, whereas minus five selects only the very darkest areas. All right, that's great. So what can you do with these selections? Well, two things. First, you can load one before adding an adjustment layer. And when you do that, the adjustment layers mask assumes the selection so that anything you do with that adjustment will only affect what's in the selection. Now the second and more powerful way that you can use luminosity selections is to make an adjustment first and then use a selection or stencil to mask that adjustment in or out of a particular tonal range. So let's say I add a contrast curve to this image and then I decide it's too much in the dark shadows so I want to mask it out from just those areas. What I'll do is click minus five which loads a selection that acts as my shadows stencil and then brush with a black brush through the stencil into the layer mask. And notice how the adjustment is now being masked out only in those dark areas. Now there's a lot more you can do with this plugin, like use it to quickly blend bracketed exposures together for a natural HDR blend. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. But first, if you wanna download the plugin for free, then like I said a second ago, you can get it from the link in the description or pinned comment. Or if you're watching on your television, then hit pause and scan this barcode with your phone. Now, the great thing about using luminosity masks to subtly apply adjustments to your images like how I've shown you is that the process is virtually identical when you want to blend bracketed exposures together. Like in this example, where I have a light exposure and a dark exposure, each in their own layer. And if I add a layer mask to this top brighter layer and then invert the mask with Command or Control I to conceal it, i.e. I'm hiding the entire layer because the layer mask is pure black, then the steps to brighten the darkest shadows in this visible dark layer are exactly the same as if this top layer was a curves adjustment and not a second exposure. So all I need to do to brighten the dark parts of the image is load a shadows luminosity selection, or in other words, a stencil that restricts the brush tools just to the dark areas of the image. And then with a white brush this time to reveal in those areas in the mask, I'll brush into the dark areas to reveal that lighter layer wherever I choose. Using luminosity masks like this to blend bracketed exposures and make accurate adjustments fixes the mistake that a lot of people make, which is using inaccurate masking techniques. But that's just one of a handful of mistakes that could be wrecking your edits without you even realizing. So watch this next video to see what those mistakes are and how you can fix them.